this topic, I asked the question on Twitter because, well, one reason I love Twitter is because the engagement, right? You get a lot of engagement. So I asked the question about why is it that people lie? Because people talk about, especially in relationships, why does he always have to lie? Or why does he have to tell a little white lie? Like all these different things, right? Even had a client that I was talking to the other day and he was saying how he was struggling with telling white lies. You know, he's like not telling the whole truth, but he's somewhat in fear of what she might say or based on her reaction. And we're going to talk about that as well uh, later on in, in the show. But I want to talk about what makes a liar. So asking this question on Twitter here were some of the answers, and we can talk about this in detail. The most common responses were low self-esteem, fear, insecurities, childhood abuse, manipulation, trying to protect the other person's feelings, and fear of confront confrontation. Now, those were, to me, the, the ones that really stood out. There was a lot of other ones, but I was like, oh, these are ones that I really can tackle uh, because I want to talk about this even just from my personal perspective because I would struggle with telling white lies and lying, trying to protect people's feelings because I didn't know the outcome, right? I'm that type of person where I need to know the outcome to everything or I kind of judge people based on predictability, based on what we have created in the past, like this dance. What is this dance that we create when we have certain conversations? Are they triggering? Uh, how do you respond to me? So based on how we talk to someone and say we don't tell the truth about something, based on your response is how most people are going to deal with you accordingly after that. So when he talked about these responses uh, about what makes a liar, and I want to talk about this in relationships as well. One of them that really stood out to me was trying to protect the other person's feelings because that was something that I struggled with. And in my last marriage, I was more of like, based on the way that we conversed before, right? Like this dance that we had before, everything ended in crying. You know, so she's crying and I'm trying to be honest with her. But a lot of times it ended in that and it ended in a lot of confrontation and arguments. So to me, I was like trying to be honest was something that I struggled with because I was like, I know how this is going to end. Now, let me rewind this back to my childhood, because looking at these answers, one of them was childhood abuse. Now, I would just say this for me, and even this is maybe for some men, we'll talk about that as well. But I know when, when I struggle with lying, and I want to tell you how I came out of that and how I got better um, through therapy and through some self-realization and doing my own work, right? Doing that inner work and working on myself. One thing I, I will give my ex credit for is we did have a conversation about how can I improve? That was something that I I value because I was like, oh, this is where I suck. This is where I need to get better at. And that had to be me being honest about my feelings. So let's talk about this with, with me growing up in my childhood because when I was younger, my feelings were never validated, right? So I'm growing up in the, in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, single mom, uh, raising four kids, but there's my daughter, I mean, there's my sister and I, and I have to be, you know, big brother. So I'm taking care of my little sister and all these other things. So my mom is working full time. She don't have time for games. So very, there was very little times where I can be honest about my feelings and my feelings be validated, right? Because she ain't had time for that. Cause in her world, my problems were little, you know, based on what she had to do here, it is she's a single parent trying to raise these kids, and no shade to mom or anything of that nature. But now that I'm older, I understand, you know, why she didn't validate my feelings, uh, and then that set me up to not be vulnerable with women because if my feelings wasn't validated by my mom, 
then that means if my mom not going to validate that, then when I get into relationships, Lord knows what they're going to think, right? And sure enough, once I got into relationships, the first hiccup that I had when it came to being confrontational and being honest, they always ended bad. So that was more of a realization to me like, oh, it's just best to tell little white lies or it's just better to not talk about it at all. Or what about this? This is what I struggle with too, where I was shut down. I was shut down because I'm like, I don't want to talk about it, right? I don't want to hear about it because it's going to end up in this situation because at the end of the day, you have to be right. I'm going to be wrong. And it shouldn't always have to be about who's right and wrong. It should be about what's best for the relationship. But looking back over my life, now I realize like, okay, I see where I went wrong. So a lot of times I was doing a lot of stonewalling. Uh, I would say I'm okay, but uh, I'm really not okay. Right. So that was something that I struggled with. So there was a lot of unresolved issues because I didn't want to talk about it because I knew how that was going to end. Now, with some men, they might struggle in that area as well. There might be some men that struggle with their feelings never being validated. Now, I'm not saying lying is okay. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is I know some guys, and if there's anybody in the chat that want to discuss this or you have questions about this, let's talk about it. Because in relationships, some guys, and I'm not speaking for all, but I'm just saying some. And just from people that I've coached and people that I've talked to and, and, and things of that nature, a lot of times they don't like the results because they're going to feel like you're going to fly off the handle when they're being honest with you. Now, some people say, I, I just want you to tell me the truth. I want you to be honest. Of course, we're always an advocate for telling the truth and being honest. But at the end of the day, how are we going to resolve this? Can I be honest? Can I put my feelings out there? and my feelings be validated and me not have to suffer the consequences for me being honest. Now, let me say this. I will say there are some things that, you know, you you have the right to be upset about. You know, I mean, if, he, if somebody cheated, I mean, you wouldn't expect them to be like, okay, yeah, I get it. No, you got every right to be upset. But at the same time, there are some conversations that doesn't always require a punishment. It doesn't always require uh, resentment or throwing it back in their face later on. Like, I think that's when a lot of guys struggle with being honest because they like, this is going to come back around. This is going to bite me in the butt somehow. Right. So if we're being honest about that, um, then we can have the conversation about how can I be honest with you and this not being thrown back in my face? So the, the key here is breaking from being a liar is, first of all, knowing who you're with. Well, first of all, let's say this. Just be honest with yourself. I think that's the most important thing because uh, if you're lying to yourself, there's no way in the world you could be honest to, with somebody else. So you have to be honest with yourself. And this comes with a lot of self-help, um, a lot of uh, reflection, and a lot of just being honest with yourself, because if you're honest with yourself, then that way you can be comfortable in your truth. That's the biggest thing. You can say, uh, I did this or, or I'm, I'm struggling with that or whatever. Let me use this as an example, because with me going through therapy and realizing how important self-help books is and reading and meditation uh, and self-awareness, right? Self-awareness is big, too, because. If there's more than one person telling you the same thing, then that's something that you probably need to check, right? So with me, my uh, self-awareness came when I was in therapy and I realized like, oh, I can be honest about my feelings because um, now with my wife and I, when we converse, we have great conversation, you know? And even if it's something that she don't agree with, then like, that's okay. And I think that's something that we have to learn about our relationships as well, too. Like we can disagree and still be good. Or I don't always have to fly off the handle when you're being honest about something. You know, they always have the uh, uh, there's the one joke that always go around about, you know, hey, the, the, the common one is, hey, honey, do I look fat in this? You know, that whole thing. 
<laughs> you know? So with guys, it's just like, oh shoot, she's gonna ask, ask me this question. I can't believe she asking me this, right? It's just like the Twix commercial. The dude just stuffed the Twix down his mouth like, I ain't gonna say anything. But if you can be honest about that and they receive that, that's a breakthrough within itself. That's a change in the relationship because now you can be honest about how you really feel. And that doesn't mean that your feelings are, uh, you know, you just hurt and crushed. It's like you ask the question. You know, that's the thing. You ask the question, so do you really want a response? And sometimes I would even ask people, I would say, you want me to be honest or you want me to just stroke your ego? Like, I'll ask that if somebody asks me a serious question. And I'm like, I just need to know which way we're going with this. Because if you're sensitive and I tell you the truth, you're going to feel some kind of way. You know, so in this day and age, especially like, could we really be honest about some things? Because people are always feeling like they're being shamed for something. You're, you know, fill in the blank, shaming me about this or you're shaming me about that. Like there's always some kind of shame to every single thing we do when at the end of the day, it's just really about being honest. And if we can get to that point where we can be honest with our significant other or whoever we married to, that's when things start to shift in the marriage because now you feel like that's a safe place. Now you feel like whatever you're thinking that you can actually say that, you know, and and it's one of those things where they, whoever you're with, they realize like, oh, like he's always being honest, you know, and I think people appreciate that too when, you, when you're known for being honest. And that's not saying that you just say what you want to say and you just disregard people feelings at all. You just like just blatantly disrespectful. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in a safe environment. That's why I say based on who you are with. Uh, because if you take this from a relationship and take it into a marriage, like it doesn't get better. You have to be honest in the infancy stages, especially when it comes to dating. Because if you lay down that, that kind of work that I'm a liar, the relationship is not going to go well, you know, because the first thing they're going to think is if you lie about the small thing, then what's going to happen if something really jumps off, like where I really need you to be honest. And that's the question that's going to be asked. So it's just best that when you land down that foundation, that you be honest about everything and be willing because sometimes people lie, like they said, that uh, to, to pr protect the other person's feelings. And I know I struggle with that, but that doesn't help because you can't make the necessary progress if you are trying to spare their feelings. But then at the same time, we got to have emotional intelligence as well. You know, we got to have that. And once we realize that we have emotional intelligence, then that's when we can connect on that deeper level. So hopefully uh, this was something that can really help someone because I know uh in today's dating culture, a lot of times people say, why they got to lie so much? And again, because some people don't, they feel like they don't, they don't want to be found out. And it comes with some shame to that. But I think if we're being more honest about who we're dating and, and answering certain questions, it's okay to say, I don't want to rock with this person because, you know, they kept it honest. And I appreciate you, but this is not what I'm looking for. And I think it saves people a lot of time as well, because when you're being honest, you can get stuff done and out the way and you can be like, hey, you know what? I'm cool on that and be OK with living in your truth, because when you, when you can live with your truth, you can be OK with the decision that you made, opposed to if you were lying, you you trying to think of different outcomes, you know. So I hope this was a help to someone. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure that you share this video with someone because you never know. You know, a lot of times people struggle with lying or with even little white lies. You know, make sure that you share this video with someone. This is Sean Heineman at It's Scary to Remarry. And make sure when you visit the website at Scary to Remarry, make sure you pick up the five part video series dating intentionally five ways to know they are the one it is an amazing phenomenal video because i talk about lying here and then we can talk about that 
we talk about that in the video series as well and about being honest and stuff like that. So make sure you pick that five part video series up. Uh, dating intentionally five ways to know they are the one for you.